بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعليه وصحبه جمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Okay uh, Well welcome back to a new episode of Dean Tour uh, Inshallah today our goal for this episode is No 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 let's not tell them our goal Let's let them Wait, guess what? Let's let them guess our goal Dude, what are you talking about, bro? This is the beginning of the video. This is the yeah, intro. This is like, trying this is to interrupt. Intro. Right. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you trying to do a scavenger? <laughs> like, you want them? To... I thought we could be really direct. Shut us your mouth, boy. <laughs> okay. So, inshallah, today goal for this episode is to uh, speak about the connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Um, a lot of like a, a lot of people it. they they tend to say that they've been losing their connection or they feel lost or they feel far away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala even if they're doing their acts of worship, right? right? And that's something that, you know, I, I can adhere to as well. Like I, I can sometimes feel that like, oh, even though I'm praying, like I don't feel like um, as much khush, uh, the, most, yeah, the most khush when I'm praying, even though I'm still praying. Like I may feel like even though especially uh, that post Ramadan depression that, mm. that like I use that term, not literally, but like that post Ramadan feeling where you feel like, dude, in Ramadan, I felt so much better than when I did right now, like or in this moment. Well, I, uh, it's a subjective view, you know, we can't really prove that. Yeah, you know, know. My, my my Muslims here can relate to what we're saying, but we are. We're, I mean, we're talking from a sub, from subjective feelings because it's like this is the connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and only a Muslim can feel this connection. Mm. Like a non muslim is not going to be able to attest to this connection Why? because they're not submitters. They're yeah, not people. Exactly. Who are... So the thing about with the connection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, especially when people start to say that it feels weak, one thing that I can I can tell you is that if you're doing the same thing over and over again, you're gonna you're it's not gonna feel the same. Like, if you're just praying five times a day and you leave it at that for the rest of your life, it's not going to feel the same every single time you do it. You know, when you first get onto it, yeah, it's going to feel good. It's like a honeymoon phase. Like, you feel great about the fact that you're praying. I like to give this example, right? Think about, like, when you're driving, right? You know, and you're about to, let's say, you're about to cruise control at 80 miles per hour, right? When you're sitting there cruising at 80, it's not the same feeling as when you're going zero to 80, right? It's just a yeah. whole different feeling because you're always elevating, right? And that's the same way we should look at our dean. We should always be trying to get better no matter what. So, you know, if, if we're sitting there at a, uh, at a certain point and we're just doing the same things over and over again every single day, you know, we're just going to start to feel like we're going nowhere. But in reality, you know, we still are moving forward at the end of the day. And there's also uh, like a theology or a philosophy that I'm pretty sure it was Imam al-Ghazali. Or it was Imam Shafi. No, I, th I think it's Imam al Ghazali. He said, like, he expressed that mankind is forgetful. Like, and mankind and in, in, in insan is forgetful. Like, and this is not something that, like, we know this. This is understandable. But just to put it into perspective, like, we were born upon the fitrah, but mankind is forgetful. They stray away from the fitrah. And we are also, like, just as we are Muslims, sometimes we can sometimes we can forget to remember Allah. Sometimes we can forget, oh, I let the time get away from me. Where is Allah? I didn't pray also. Like, like, but these are the habits you have to remind yourself. You have to also have to put yourself in a place where you can be reminded. Environment plays a big role in this. And here's the thing. The best among you is the ones who remembers Allah the most. And if you want to be the best, it's not always going to be easy, right? Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. have to understand even at these difficult times or whatever time it may be, remember Allah subhanahu wa no, ta'ala. It's easy to remember Allah when he has given you everything you, you've asked for. Like, like when he's answered every single one of your, your du'as. But when something hard hits you, what, it becomes hard all of a sudden? Like, obviously, like, wh where would the test be if you weren't shaken? Yeah, we can't say and it's that. And like, in Surah Baqarah, like, it's like, and when we're talking about the believers um, and, like, their hardships, it was like, um, like, hardship had hit them. And, and they were shaken until even the messenger with them, that was with them said, where is, where is the help of Allah? Indeed, the help of Allah is near. But it's, you know, it's the consciousness that God is watching. And this, everything in your life has been articulated and planned. Well, from, subhanallah. Yo, uh -huh. do you think about mm. that though? Like the people are tested so hard. Even their messenger is like, yo, where's the help of Allah? Like Allah, we need and you. Dude, like, and dude, he got, he, the messenger was the one to get true, true revelation from God. Yeah. Like and, the, and he's the like, messenger must've known a little bit more of what was happening. Like, yeah. okay, yeah, I, this is, this is indeed a test from Allah. Allah may, maybe even told this messenger that you were going to be, be tested. tested. Your people would be tested to see if they're true submitters, right? Mm -hmm. But see, then it got to be too much for them. And it was the same thing. It was the same thing for the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sahaba, right? Remember when they were first like uh, the early days of Islam before the conquest of Mecca, like how how um, how difficult it was for them. You know, they were thrown out of their homes. They they uh, they had no food. They had no money. Like 
they were they were living in a state of poverty that they had never lived in before. A lot of these people, they were rich. Like Uthman ibn Affan, he was rich. He's rich. Like he didn't he, he didn't have to become Muslim and submit his uh, his entire will to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but he did. And also with all the wealth that he had. It also puts in perspective the purpose of this life. Like I remember I posted to our story, um, someone uh, someone named Hassan Hassan SQ. He's on Instagram. He's an attorney, uh, an American attorney. He said like. Ultimately, we were we had to dive to the bottom of the ocean, speaking figuratively, to find the pearls. We were Adam alayhi salam was sent down to earth to what? What pearls are we finding here? Faith in Allah, though we had never seen him. Mm. Faith in our Lord, though we had never seen him. We so we heard that there was a one, the, the, the true God, and we said we like Like this in the back the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah, you hear this this saying from the believers, like. This is the pearls that we gain from believing in Allah, even though, no matter what, even if we're going through hardship, even if we're going, even if we're at the highest point of our, of our lives. SubhanAllah. And Allah, man, shout out to Hassan SQ, man. He's, he's an Speaking amazing about what you said, you I know, love him. You were talking to me earlier about people lacking Ihsan. You know, you're not worshiping Allah as if Allah, as if you uh, see Allah, right? But you also have to remember, Allah is always watching you. Allah knows exactly what's going on with you. Allah has created you. Allah knows you better than you know yourself. So you have to put your trust in Allah, have that tawakkul, right? Mm -hmm. That no matter no matter what what befalls you, Allah will take care of you. Even mm -hmm. if even if like let's say the worst uh, scenario is even death, and even to uh, the believers, this this is a blessing. Yeah, in al insan khuliqa haluha. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I don't memorize it, but it's uh, indeed mankind is created anxious, and then either yeah. shadru jazua. For example. What? Everyone wants to go to Jannah. No one wants to die. Yeah, exactly. So I don't like. like also, when you think about it, in um, I, I can't pinpoint <clears throat> what surah it's in, but when Allah says that He sent the Prophet Ali right? Salam, right? He said he he um, he's anxious. Someone he's shy. Like he's he's not he's not doing anything on his own accord. He's doing everything that he's told by by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Like all the all the messages that Angel Jibril came Ali Salam that came uh, with him, and he's saying like he's shy amongst you. He's anxious. He's not like. You, you know, he's soft. He's soft amongst you. Like he has so much passion for you, uh, for, for the people. Mm -hmm. And like, we could see that through through his action. You know, the man was a very, he was a very passionate man. Like, I remember a story um, where they had prisoners of war and he had no idea what to do with them. I might have been a khattab at the time. You know, he was a very uh, strong man. He was very um, like strict, outgoing. He was someone, he, he said, you know, kill them. You know, they they were enemies of you. Like they, they wanted to kill you. Like you should kill them. Mm -hmm. Abu Bakr al <coughs> anhu. he said, you know, not like keep them. Maybe they'll turn back to Allah. Like, you know, forgive them. You know, we're, uh, we have to be forgiven the way Allah is forgiving, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So in that in that time, he he took the route of Bukhara Sadiq. You know, he was a he's a passionate man. Like he he turned and he he showed them mercy. And it's like you look at the way that we try to live our lives, like where would we be without the hardship? Look at the uh possibly one of the greatest stories in the Quran is the story of Surah Duha. You know, it's something that so many people quote in their Instagram bios, you know, and he found you lost and guided you. He made you, he saw you poor and made you self-sufficient. And what is that, what is that verse doing? It's reassurance. Yeah, it's Because obviously, what is it? What is mankind? Mankind is forgetful. Mm -hmm. Mankind is created anxious. Mankind is created, like, we hear all of this about our creation, about our natural fitrah. And it's like, we seem to, like, forget that hard times will, are inevitable. And imagine, imagine, you know... You're sitting here reading the Quran every single day. You're getting the reassurance every single day. How could you ever fall off the path of Allah like mm -hmm. this? SubhanAllah. And then, like, the dhikr, because why would you never fall off? Because every time you're reading Quran, it's you're reading the direct words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, like, and it feels just like that it's statement, just that you. statement is crazy. This is the direct words from your creator sent down to mankind. And it has not been set except to guide you, not to mislead you, but to guide you. And so whenever you're, it's like that, that self-discipline to know, even if you don't feel like reading, reading Quran today, like the only thing you can gain out of it is benefit. It's not even, it's <clears> not even <throat> just that. Like, um, it's like hardship may not even be <coughs> physical. It may not even. It may be. Uh, may not even be it mental. Be, it may be spiritual. You may yeah. be feeling. You may, far you may away be like falling Allah. into sin. Like yeah. yeah, you may fall into sin, or you may start to feel further away from Allah. But that may be Allah showing. Like, are you gonna stop your acts of worship because you don't feel them the same way that you used to, or are you gonna pick them up even more, do even more to because get closer you're, you're, to yeah. Allah? You're fearful of losing your relationship with Allah. Yeah, because if you lose that relationship with Allah, and you lose out on everything. That is true fear of Allah. <laughs> <laughs> like. like if you lose that relationship with Allah, you're going to lose out on everything. Like the chain 
that's your connection with Allah. Everything else that connects to the chain, like just because like, the say, chain is rusted, just because the chain gets rusted or maybe sin does not mean you can't look. <laughs> let's say, let's doesn't say mean like it's this. gonna break. Yeah, let's say it like this: the connection with Allah is the is the train car that's actually driving. If you cut, if you cut that chain car, if you cut that connection with Allah, every single car behind it stops. It's not gonna keep moving. Only you will keep moving. But you'll be moving without your connection with Allah. Because that connection with Allah, it won't stop you from living. But ultimately, it will stop you from living. Because you won't be able to live your life the way, the same way that you would before. You, you won't sleep. be able to go through your hardships the same way. You'll start questioning the, the hardship. You'll start questioning your creator. Mm -hmm. And that's something that you can never do. You have to get rid of those doubts. And one thing, when talking about maintaining deen with Allah, uh, like maintaining your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like just think back to the story of Adam. Like our first, the first of our kind, the first human ancestor that we have. Who, like, what happened to him? Who, who was the one that deviated him? Shaytan. Shaytan. Least, yeah. But ultimately, it was Adam alayhi salam's fault. Allah told him to get out of Jannah. He told him and his wife, all of them, to get out, all of you. And, but we don't take it, like, we always forget about Shaytan in the story. Like, Shaytan in the Quran, like, Allah dis declares him to be an enemy to mankind. All right, he you got our very own father kicked out of Jannah, and he's still he's still to this day to, he's working, still sitting here to this day trying to take your Jannah away from you, uh, like, and have you end up in the hell. Don't think it's minimal. Like what he's doing is minimalistic. Like in every single way, shape, or form possible, he does not want to see, see you succeed in this world or the next world. He wants you to fail that test so that like he wants you to fail a test. He wants you to not hit a PR. He wants you to not go to the gym. He wants you to not do anything. So what? So you can feel depressed. So you can feel sad. So you can feel like you know you're not doing there? enough. So you feel like Allah is not with you. You know how we get there? How you get there? By the little things. Like, we, we all, we're always worried about the big things. I, but it's I was always... just going to say, I was going to say, I was a little thing. Like, Look, it's, it's, it's a little but it's, 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 it's heavy. heavy. So finally, yeah, you're right. But like, even the actions of the shaitan, like, you know, first he'll get you to not read the Quran as much. Then he'll get you to not pray as much. Then he'll, then he'll get you to not study. Like, then he'll get you to what not. What did the Prophet to become, like, in his last sermon? And like, on this day, the shaitan has given up on on you on him trying to get you guys to worship him but he's going to try and get you guys in the little deeds so mm -hmm. you know that's that's where you guys should be conscious he's going to get you there. a cheat on that assignment cheat on that test cheat on any just any little way some way shape or form to try and deviate you not just like just, he's just like a clear enemy to you like just imagine he, he's out here making you think that allah is not the most merciful he thinks that yeah he, <laughs> even so even when you sin and you go to ask for forgiveness he's he's still trying to he's still trying to get you to deviate you he's the one he's the one whispering in your ear oh god's not gonna forgive you you turn you too dirty you can't do it oh you, you're, you're being a hypocrite dirty. you're being a hypocrite like you're a munafi you, you like think, like yeah, who that <laughs> come on you think how much of a hater this man like well why that biggest hater look, too, man. bro if he could <laughs> see no one in jannah he would if That's, he could have everyone join him in jahannam and just be like yo I promised y'all something. Allah promised you something. But y'all chose to go with me. And I couldn't... Like, my promise wasn't true. Oh, and Allah's I, promise was true. And you guys are going to follow him. If mm -hmm. he could see no mm -hmm. one in Jannah, no, wow. he would. Like, that's that's the craziest so, part about that's, it. That's in Surah Ibrahim. But that's the the jingle, the, the little poem he's going to... He's going to, like... He's going to say. He's going to say, Allah gave you a promise. And I gave you a promise. Now, imagine on a day of judgment how humiliated you will be from following the promise. What is Shaitan's promise? Shaitan's promise is false hopes. Like uh, the hayat, the, the, yeah, the hayat of dunya, deception. Truth with what is falsehood. deception? You think you're doing good when you're in reality, you're not. You think you're experience. Like imagine during Ramadan, you're fasting. Like, but dude, if I eat food, I'll feel well, I'll feel good. This is deception. Allah has commanded you to to fast in this month, to not eat, to abstain from food and drink for a certain period of time. So you abstain for a certain period of time, though it may not seem as if oh, it's doing you well a service. It is doing you a service. Look how he can it's turn you deception. away from from large deeds like the prayer. Like, or at least get you to, uh, to uh, what's it called? Procrastinate your prayer or be lazy in your prayer. Or be li even like... Or like I said, he'll, he'll be, be like, okay, like, let's say for, for people who are obsessed with like the video games and they're so obsessed to the point where they can't get up for the prayer at the time of the prayer is called. So then maybe they'll start waiting until it's um, the last minute of prayer when you can't, you shouldn't be doing that. Because mm -hmm. that's that could be a sign of a munafik if you're getting up for the prayer lazily. Mm -hmm. If you're delaying the prayer on purpose. Like... Or if you don't get up for the prayer at all and you just wait till the next one. Like we we've, we've been in these situations like, before oh, as, as youngsters where we we thought that we could uh like work our way around this. We thought there were loopholes in the deen. There are no loopholes in the deen. It's called the Sarat al Mustaqim for, for a reason. There's no turns, there's no U-turns, there's no, there's no other route. It's one route. It's in the first surah of the Quran. It's in the surah that you recite 17 times a day. In your five obligatory prayers, it's Sarat al-Mustaqim. Like you ask it over and over again. 
Allah. And a part of the a part of that is the fact that it's, the, it's a dua. Allah is answering you when you say that. When you say like, guide us on the straight path, because you can't guide yourself. And yeah, here's the thing. Like I said, one of the biggest examples of Shaitan being the biggest hater, and one of the biggest problems of today is the fact that he'll get you to doubt in Allah's mercy. Mm -hmm. Like I want you to imagine this. Allah says he'll go for Rahim, and you you completely disregard that, and in you doing that, that is worse than the sin that you committed. Subhanallah. And that's, Subhanallah. that's such Allah. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Wait. What? Say it again. Okay. When you doubt in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah, this is worse than the sin itself that you've committed that you're trying to seek repentance from. Yeah, because and it, you know that's it's an easy thing to do, right? Like. So let's say some, you it's commit a, a sin. It's, yeah, it's not even, it, like, let's say it's not even a major sin. It's not a major sin. It's a minor sin, but it's still a sin. And if for someone, for someone with like a level of iman that they'll feel guilt, like, oh snap, I sinned. But then that, that sin will still eat you no matter what. It'll eat you for a day. It could eat you for a week. It could eat you for a month. It can eat you for the rest of your life. Especially for a major sin. Like if you commit a major sin, even though, even if you turn back to Allah, that major sin will still eat away at you for the rest of your life. And that's, that's something that, that's from the shaitan. That's not from Allah. Allah is not going to make you feel guilty about your sin if you've sincerely repented for it. Because well, like, why, why would Allah do that? Allah doesn't gain nothing from you feeling guilty about your sin. Allah gains nothing from you doing the sin in the first place. Yes, like, and, it's, and it goes back to remembering what are we on this earth? Like, and you should know as a Muslim, this is speaking to the Muslims, every single son of Adam commit sins but the best of the son the best, best of sinners, sinners are is the those ones who, who repent. repent why would the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam reveal this statement to us allah says in the quran he knows what is innermost your innermost secrets deep down to every single human watching this muslim or non-muslim he knows your innermost secrets he knows what you hide he knows what you express he knows what you feel he knows what you think on a daily day day-to-day -day basis every single thought that runs through your head everything that you he knows you more than you know you he created you. Of course. Uh. This is, think about the reality of this. If you were, if Allah would have punished you for the, every, for any human's wrongdoings, he would have not left a single, or any creature wrongdoings, he would have not left a single thing on the planet. He wouldn't have left a single thing in this world. He would have, he would have destroyed it all. But so what is our ultimate purpose? If it's not to be perfect, to repent. Turn back to Allah. Turn back to Allah. And Worship Allah's, Him and Allah's associate no part and associate no partners with Him. That's also a big thing. Associate no partners. So your work and like, dude, I remember reading in Surah Hud. Pre, I'm pretty sure it was like, so wh let whoever wants his deeds to come to fruition in the afterlife, into into this life, he will have no share in the afterlife. Subhanallah. Meaning, if you're gonna, if, if you're you gonna, want, only, if you're, if only, you're only gonna do good to find good in this life. Then you're not gonna have no afterlife. Where's your share? And it's like, and in Surah Baqarah, uh, like, and like they don't, they leave at the part. There's gonna be no, there's no, um, oh no, it's they, they only say that, and they leave at the part. Like they leave at the part of the afterlife. Yeah, they leave and out, and like when, especially when I when I was told about that dua, I was told to never never ask it with the thought of the dunya. You obviously you're asking for good in the that? dunya, but you never ask it with your heart attached to the dunya. Don't ask it with your heart seeking the dunya. You ask it for your heart seeking the akhirah. <laughs> you say, "Rabbana atina fi dunya wa fi Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirah hasana wa kina adab al But you, it's not disregarding the dunya part. You want good for the dunya, but you want good for the akhirah like your heart should desire the akhirah because that's more. what's really gonna matter at, at the end yeah like the dunya is the halfway point of the of this like think about it as um like a number line the halfway point that's the dunya the end point is the akhirah the end point is infinity it goes to infinity so if you're only going to seek for the end uh, for the mid uh, the midpoint then go ahead and do that but you're not going to get everything you uh, you desire it's like how foolish would you be to like buy a hotel and or get a hotel and move all your furniture into it of course not. And you're, you're going to stay there for a couple of days. Yeah, you're, oh, you're just going to stay there for a day or half of a day. Subhanallah. Yeah. <laughs> Subhanallah, man. Crazy. Allahu Akbar. Like that. Oh, shoot. That's like, that's the, that's just a way to think about it. Mm -hmm. Is because if, um, like, you're never going to feel close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if your heart is a test to the dunya. And there's also, um, yes, I do agree with that. And it's that. crazy because I was going to bring this up in a, in a different Good. episode. But, you know, I feel like it matters here because this is the connection with Allah. Like, this is a spiritual feeling. and. 
You know, it came from a show. Obviously, it's going to sound corny, but it came from Avatar The Last Airbender. And Legends what the of heck, man? So, when you think about it, uh, for, for those who know, they know, all right? So, obviously, the airbenders, you know, they're people, they're spiritual, they, they're they like monks and stuff like that. They disconnected themselves from the world. And for me, that that actually educated me. I was like, yo, that's that makes sense. Like, disconnecting yourself from the world, disconnecting yourself from the tether that this world holds on you. So, like, you're... The responsibilities, yeah, you have responsibilities in the world. Like, take your portion of the dunya. Well, but ultimately, dunya. ultimately, don't forget about what, like, where your uh, the most portion is from. The don't forget about where you're going. Yeah. Don't don't sacrifice your afterlife for the, this worldly affair. For no, something it, that's not even guaranteed for you. Yeah, it doesn't it's make like, any you sense. You want to live. You low key. Life. You low key want to live your life in in a state of it's just dunya. Like if you're someone right, who, who got was, in a, that was our, our buddy Yusuf, man. Yeah, Yusuf. Like he, you know, he Yusuf, woke you know me Yusuf. up. Well, like, yeah. you know, he's like, this is know you dunya, know. man. This is dunya. Well, I remember he, dunya. He, he, something happened to his body. He said, it's just dunya, man. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> see, the, living with that type of mindset, that's something I had to adopt, especially getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helped me yeah. so much because it was more like, okay, nothing in this world like truly matters to the point where I'd sacrifice my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. Like, let's say you get in a haram re- relationship and you think that like everything's going good and then it just ends. See, now your, your connect, connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could be fractured with it's, that because it was a haram yeah, relationship. It's been fractured, even though, and then your heart's fractured. Yeah, even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want that relationship for you, so he took you out of it. And uh, let's say it was supposed to turn you back, but maybe it turned you even further away because you were engaging in haram, and then you engaged in more haram by turning away from him, by turning to other than Allah, turning to drugs, turning to alcohol, turning to more sin, you know, like th- these types of things. See, but when you're not connected to the world, you'll see something like that. If you got in a haram relationship and you have a connection with Allah and he took you out of it, you'd see it like, okay, this is just dunya. Like, this is Allah seeing better for me. Like, or if you're if you're someone looking for a spouse and you see that Allah takes uh, this person away from you. Like, you thought everything was good. You thought you were going to marry this person, but then they take it away. Are you going to look at it like, hey, man, like, it just didn't work. Now I'm not ever going to find love and never like this and that, this and that. And you're just going to start questioning things. Or are you going to be like, this is just Allah testing me, showing me like this person may have not been good for me. Here's the thing. I really don't understand that like loser of a mindset right there. Like whenever like that falls upon you and you're just like, well, you know, that's just it. You know, I'm never going to never going to come back from this. Like, dude, what are you like? What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. What are you doing? What are you doing, doing? <laughs> are you doing to life? I, no, but like seriously speaking, like what? what no. In, in all no. actuality, what are you doing? You have the potential and you're just sitting there and you just throw everything out. No, there was a, look, there was a point I wanted to put forth um, in Surah Hazab. It was... Allah says, Ya ayuhal ladhina amunu qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubukum. Like, this is such a big, like, like a wake-up call. Like, I remember, I heard that, I heard that in like a, like a little khutbah, like a little halaqa, like a talk. Mm-hmm. And the, the speaker said that, and I was like, dude, what? Y- yeah. Oh, you who believe. Say, good, say a good speech. Orient yourself in a good way. And Allah will forgive you of your sins. And like, you bring to account your good deeds. Like, subhanAllah, like, isn't that crazy? Just be be a good human being. You have the translation for that verse? Those verses? I don't have the translation. Uh, <laughs> just be, be a good human being. Be someone who presents yourself well. Like, adhere to the, to the character of a Muslim. Believers, be mindful of God. Speak in a direct fashion and to good purpose. And he will put your deeds right, you, right for you and forgive you of your sins. Whoever obeys God and his messenger will truly achieve great, a great triumph. I forgot that yeah, part. So, like, basically, basically, what you're saying is, well, I'm I'm gonna touch on both both of what you guys said. Like, living with this loser mindset, living with this mindset that, like, you know, uh, something that happens to you in your life may be too much for you, maybe something that you you can't handle. So then you sacrifice your connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, or maybe like you don't you don't turn to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as much because you're going through something. Like, that's when you're supposed to turn to Allah even more. That's when, you know, the connection with Allah is supposed to strengthen the most. Like, especially for myself, whenever I go through something, I try so hard, so hard not to do anything but turn to Allah. Like, when, I, when, I, was, when I was sick, I was so sick, I was sitting there like, hey, man, what are you, like, why, what am I, what am I doing, man? Like, how I get sick? <laughs> I was even there, so, like, Yo, even so, sick? yeah, and then those are normal, like, questions to ask. I'm like, man, I'm a believer, I pray for other day, but this fulan, he's not sick. I'll be like, yeah. but no, but like, it's like, dude, God's forgiving your sins yeah, when, and you, then I, yeah, and when then any I turn harm back. befalls you. And then I turn back and I tell anybody I talk to, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's fine. You know, I'm sick, but it's all good. Because, you know, I love you carry that, you carry that with a smile. Or even if you go through something detrimental, something that's like, like, 
you wouldn't have seen it for a million years and then like it befalls you and then you remember like man this is dunya remember what you're here for Dude, god remember is, god allah is, is not going to put you through something you can't handle yeah. So you have to understand anything you go through in this life, you can handle it 100%, 1000%. I promise you that. Mm -hmm. So when you decide to and give up on mindset, it, that's, that's on a, you. That's a belief. SubhanAllah. And you know, one thing I used to say was that like, I'd never go to therapy and I still stand by that obviously, but I, I would never look down upon it for someone else because obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can send help through other people. Yeah. Because yeah, through forms of people. Uh, yeah, I remember mankind is forgetful. Sometimes you need that therapy session. You, sometimes you need someone to sit there and talk to you, I mean, sit you down and talk to you and tell you and remind you of your, like remind you of something. What especially, did Allah do? He sent messengers. Yeah. Allah yeah, sent messengers. Especially if you have like, if you, especially if you have Muslim Allah, companions, if you have like, if you have Muslim friends that you could sit there and talk to because they'll understand your point of view. Like you can't go to a non-Muslim telling them what you're going through because then they'll start feeding stuff into your mind that's away from Islam, that's away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They won't tell you to turn back to God. They don't believe in, they don't believe in the same thing that you do. Yeah. Like, and if you, you don't think that's a, Muslim, that's a big deal. Yeah, exactly. That, that that's, your, big deal. that's your way of life. That's, that's your spirituality. Like, that's your spirituality. Exactly. That's an entire component of your, like your, your humanity. That's why I'm so quiet around everybody. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what I go through because you can't handle like, uh, the way that I want to handle it. Or you even so it. in sort of, in sort of use of it was like, I only complain of my grief to Allah. Yes. I only of my that was one of Allah. the craziest verses. Call it in the ashku bathi wa husni illallah. Like that was one of the craziest verses I've ever heard. I was like, man, that was crazy. <laughs> like, I was like, that was crazy. I first took that into my life and incorporated it like years ago. But when I did that, I started, I stopped like going to other people because I was like, why am I complaining to you? You're a slave of Allah, just like me. Like I could talk to you about it. I could seek like obvious Islamic advice because that's all I want. If I'm going to talk to someone about my problems, I want Islamic advice. I don't need like, I don't need none of this other stuff, man. The only thing that's going to help me spiritually, mentally, physically is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is all of it. Like, Allah is all of it. Like you could help me. Oh, mentally, okay, cool. But my spirituality is still lacking. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm mentally good. Like oh, I'm mentally good with my body. I don't want but spiritually. One third I'm not doing well. Like I don't want one third. I want it all. This ain't no Trinity, dog. Like, <laughs> that boy said I want it all. <laughs> yeah. Like Allah could help me no matter where I ask Him. And you know, like doing dua, like you could, you could talk to Allah like your brother, like your not your brother. No, <laughs> you could talk, you could talk to Allah like the way that you want to, You would seek to talk to anybody that. You would want to talk to the way is Allah can give you anything if He yeah. pleases to. So and, and I'm not, He has it all. Yeah, I'm so not you saying, should ask Him. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying talk to Allah like, like Yo Allah, man. I need, no, <laughs> you like you talk to Allah with the most of respect, most humility, because this is your Creator that you're talking to. But you can go to Him with all what your. What you're grief. trying to say is that He knows you better than anyone. Yeah, you else. can go to Allah with all your grievances. Like yeah, like Allah, you know what I'm going through, but I'm gonna voice that out to you because for one, I want to hear it myself, and two, like you voicing it, that shows that shows you and that shows Allah that like. You need that him. shows that you're taking action too. Yeah, because I don't like I don't like to hear like, oh, Allah knows what's going on in my heart. Like, yo, talk to Allah. Tell Allah exactly what's going on in your heart, even though He knows it. Because on the day of judgment, Allah's gonna ask you questions, but He knows the answer. Why does He do that? Maybe because when you answer, He wants to hear your answer, no matter what, even if He knows it. He knows all the things. When when He had the conversation with uh, the angels saying that He was gonna create Adam Ali Sam, He knew exactly what they were gonna say. Oh, you're gonna create someone who, who's gonna make mischief, but he still talked to them. He still said, "I know over you. Uh, I know more than you. Uh, than I you know, know that which you do yeah, not. know. I know that which you do not know." And then when he taught Adam's uh, Adam, and he said the names Adam of all, all the names. And he said, "Yo, uh, he told the um, the angels, tell me, tell me the names of these things." And they said, "Like we only know that that which you taught us." They said, "Glory be to you. We only know that which uh, you have taught us." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why would he do these things if he already knew? On the day of judgment, uh, like, do we not know what the Prophet is going to do? He's going to make his dua, right? Mm -hmm. And Allah, Allah knows what that dua is. Yeah. <laughs> Allah already knows that. Allah already knows that this, he's going to uh, allow the Prophet is going to intercede for, uh, for a lot of his ummah. For his but we're still Allah. living here right now. Why is the day of judgment not here yet? Okay, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because Allah has knowledge over all of it, but it's still going to happen, no matter what you want. Allah knows what we do not know. And this is... That is reality, subhanAllah. We yeah, know, exactly. That we is know reality. little. We know little about like even our own. Look, selves. listen. Allah knows that which you do not know, and perhaps you might hate something uh, that is good for you, and you might love something that is bad for you. And then Allah knows that which you do not know. The main point, and this is the last point, is that don't like you it, to maintain that connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. First and foremost, is engaging in your acts of worship, engaging in the Sunnah. You know, du'a is one of the one of the greatest things that you could do. 
it's not the least you could do. It's the, it's the best thing you could do aside from your your uh, daily acts of worship. Because you doing dua is you voicing your concerns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he knows them, even though he knows what's going on, even though he sees all that's going on uh, with you and with your life. You voicing that puts your reliance upon Allah. It, it gives you yeah. tawakkul. Well, what, what did Allah say in the Quran? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِ يَسْتَجِبُ لَكُمْ Your Lord said, call upon me, I will respond to you. Exactly. Call upon him. You can't call and upon and him. And he just he didn't say that just to like, like dude, he said, like strictly, this is unambiguous. This is a strict term. Call upon me, I will respond to you. Doesn't Allah. matter who you are. Call upon me, I will respond to you. He didn't say Muslim. He said anybody. So if any human being, Muslim or not, you call upon Allah, Allah will answer you. But you even, even Satan. What it's, like, like I, I remember I brought this up in a previous episode. Even Satan Made the right to Allah. And it, he said, and it was accepted. Like, let me live until the day, day of judgment. And Allah said, you're reprived. You you're live until the day yeah. of judgment. Do, do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. uh, you keep misleading my, my creation and I'll come, I'll forgive them so long as they turn to me and associate no partners with me. Well, subhanAllah. That's a great way to end that video right there. Well, subhanAllah. You know, with that being said, that's going to close out this episode. Speaking about the connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very very passionate episode because we all we all strive to have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that the prophets did and although we will never reach that status you know we can only we can only strive to do so which is why we always need to strive to do more inshallah mm -hmm. but with that being said you know assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all right <laughs> 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 all right guys uh hope you guys enjoyed this podcast episode make sure you guys like this video share this with your friends and family you never know whose life you can change by sharing this mm -hmm. just remind you guys we're still students of knowledge we're not scholars that being said all right just one thing to say